in Joshua chapter 3. Now, when you read the Bible, and you've read it, hopefully, years and years and years, and what we do is we forget we read the Bible. We know what Joshua 24 said. And when we go fresh into the, a book like the book of Joshua, let's take chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. It's like chapter 4, 5, and 6 hasn't been written yet. Now we left Joshua chapter 2. He's standing at the Jordan River. It is mighty flowing. And God says, go over, be strong, of good courage. And here's his mighty river. He does not know what's going to happen in chapter 3 until we now read it. And it's called walking by faith. God's, when, before we get to chapter 3, the faith of Joshua, here is his mighty, all right, God, we're going to go over. There are no ferry boats. There are no rowboats. There are no ships of any kind. And I don't even would think that the idea of the Red Sea is in his mind. He's just probably thinking we're going to trample, we're going to fight ourselves across this river. Everybody. And get on the other side. And when I say when we cross the river, Jordan, we are now going to be in enemy territory. Everybody is to hate the children of Israel. So... What we're going to do now is, and we see in this chapter, the word Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, is ten times in eight verses. In the book is thirty times in twenty-five verses about the Ark of the Covenant. And Joshua rose early in the morning. It's amazing when we look at the Old Testament and we look at Jesus. When they're given something to do, they raise up early in the morning, and there's no alarm clocks. I don't know what they use, but the fact is that their thing is, all right, they get up early in the morning and go. The manna was to be taken early in the morning. And they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. There's a river. He and all the children of Israel lodged there before they passed over. They come to the Jordan River and they camp. Oh boy, this is going to be a challenge. Let's take a break. Look at that mighty river. And we had a river back in Connecticut that would, that would flood when the snows melted. And that river was mean sounding. I remember one time we went there and the whole area was all flooded. Where we would be parking our cars and go walk around, it would be all flooded. We sat one time, we watched, here comes this guy's shed <laughs> floating down the road, uh, floating down the river. Here comes tires, here comes all kinds of things floating. And God says, on the other side of that mean, nasty river is your land. <laughs> but you say, this? no, we don't know what happened to the Jordan River yet. We're not there. Here's this, I don't know if you've ever seen a mean, nasty river flowing, but, oh boy. And when the river overflows, there's more to cross of water and less land. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, make sure the Levites, but can't have Roman Catholic priests. You can't have priests of Satan. you got to have the Levites. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. Bearing it, that would be Korah, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. So they're following a cloud or fire. Now they're following the ark. And yet there shall be a space between you and it. About 2,000 cubits by measure. That's about 3,000 feet. That's about a quarter of a mile. And again, that, that cubic, there's all variations of the measurement. And the thing I get is, 
When you see a fire truck or a bus, a city bus, there's a sign on the back of that bus, keep it back. <laughs> and it'll say 500 feet or whatever. That's what is happening here. And let me see one reference here. So we had a bad day of references last night. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5. We'll see this played out before Solomon. Proverbs 3, 5. Chapter with chapter, verse with verse, scripture with scripture, studying. It would be good if God laid it all out in one lump sum. You know, all the arts, all the faiths, all the, you know, but no. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. That sounds good, doesn't it? And lean not unto thy own understanding. Oh, that's a Sunday school verse. Children know this verse. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. That's exactly what's going on here. Trust in the Lord. Remember where we're at. We're at this mighty flowing river. God said we're going across. Joshua says we're going across. <sighs> Our cows are going to be washed away. That's what's happening at the bank of the Jordan River right now. <laughs> Stop thinking about Joshua 3 and going Joshua 4, Joshua 5. Let's look at the people right now. That'd be like God telling me right now, I want you to go down at the end of uh, International Boulevard. I want you to come to the beach and I want you to go to Africa. Uh, yeah, okay, right, Lord. It's a big, big ocean. That's what happened with the Red Sea. Now here we are again. So let's see what happened. I want you to have a space. So you got to see God up ahead. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way. There's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So you see what God's doing right now is you do not see anywhere else. But you see the fact is, okay, here's God, I'm leading you through a path. A path that you have not trod. You realize at this moment right now, there's only two men that have been in the land of Cana. That is Joshua and Caleb. No one else has ever, 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 ever been in that land. And we're not where Joshua and Caleb cross. That was down south. No one's ever been through this river before. We don't know how deep it is, do we, Joshua? Oh, I have no idea. You might step out in that Jordan and that thing may drop 4,000 feet. You may find out the Jordan, you just can walk right across it. Maybe it's shallow. By which ye must go. So Israel, you can't go up north, you can't go down south. In order to get to the promised land, you must go that path right there, and there's the path. That's like Jesus telling people today, you must be born again. There is no other way. And what we're seeing forth in Joshua now is Jesus. I am the way, follow me, Joshua, with that ark up ahead. I am the truth. If you go anywhere else on this Jordan River, God's not going to take care of you. You're going to drown. You're going to die. You're going to be swept away. You've got to go where I'm going. And this is the truth because this is what God's telling us. Here is Joshua in Gospel of John chapter, 10, uh, chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You go any other way, you're going to drown out. This is a must. As must be born again, we preach today. Joshua, this is a must. Not perhaps. A must. Go. For ye have not passed this way hitherto. No one ever has ever crossed this path. It's unknown. John the Baptist is yet 14,000, I mean 1,400 years later. In the future. And again, the river is mighty. This way it may have been passed 400,000 million times, but now the river is mighty. 
We'll come across that in verses 16, 17. We'll jump ahead to tell you right now that river is very rampant. It's very large. It is very, very angry. And no one's ever been this way. Not even Joshua. Not even Caleb. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify, set yourself apart. Those are the ones that don't want to serve God. We're the ones that want to serve God. We're the ones that want to do what God wants to say. Those are the people who don't want to do what God tells us. You're supposed to sanctify yourself. Jesus tells us, do not go with mammon. You cannot have mammon and God. Those are the words of Jesus. And if you got people who are Christians are worldly, bye, sorry, can't serve you, too busy serving what I'm supposed to be doing. Sanctified means you're set apart. For tomorrow the Lord, tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Again, he doesn't know what's going to happen. And this may be the Holy Spirit using his mouth, inspiration. He may have said that the Lord will do wonders among you tomorrow. And he's like, did I say that? I had that happen to me yesterday, Friday. Guy says, well, let's pray. Okay, pray. I prayed. And then this, and then he starts saying something like, what did I just say? What did I do? The Holy Spirit came in, took over my mouth in a prayer, and the Holy Spirit was working on this guy's heart, what I said. It's great when you're in the Lord. And Joshua spake unto the priests. Now see, he's in charge. And yet the priests are in charge. And you got a church, state, state, church right here. Joshua's the state, and the priests are the church. And they're working together. Oh, that's bad in, in America, isn't it? But it got the people across, and it pleased God, didn't it? You know what American freedom has done? is taken away the growth of the church and the growth of Christians, and today they don't believe anything. And the fact is, you come in 2018 and you read Christians' posts and they're all happy about Easter. They have a foggy idea what Easter is. They don't want to know. And when you get to do what the Bible says, they look at you like, oh, you're a weirdo. Yeah, that's what the scriptures say. But the problem is, it's coming from the wrong people. The world is supposed to look at you weird, not the Christians. Take up the ark. And notice he says to the priest, take up the ark. This would also be the children of Korah. You know what happened to David when he told the people, just pick up the ark and put it on a cart? Well, the Philistines did it. And pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. Now look at them obeying the government. You know, the priests in Jesus' time did not do what Joshua, Jesus, told them to do, didn't they? Very few of them. Nicodemus did right. Joseph of Arimea did right. And the Lord said unto Joshua, now this is God speaking to Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. See the book? You got a title on top of your Bible that says Joshua? There's his name magnified. And like I said, I don't know dates. I'm going to say, I'm going to assume that this is the best date possible that, that the person put it in the Bible. You got 1,400 years before Jesus Christ. You got 2,018 years after Jesus Christ. 3,000, 3,500 years, approximately thereabouts. We are still reading and we're still calling to a name called Joshua. And that's magnification. What was the name of the, the 25th person that crossed the Jordan River here? I don't know. That name wasn't magnified. Here's Joshua magnified. And we read about it. He's got a Bible name book. That's great magnification, isn't it? Now, the fact is, we got a book called Joshua, and the Lord said, I'll magnify you. There is the fulfillment of that prophecy. Everyone, open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 2. We'll start. Look at that. There it is. Chapter 3, verse number 7. 
that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with they. Now, isn't it? Do you see God trying to give it a hint right there? We already know what's going to happen. As I was with Moses, remember what happened with Moses? Remember a body of water? Look at God working up. Thou shalt command the priest that bear the ark. All right, there was no ark with Moses. Red Sea. Of the covenant. Say, when ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in the Jordan. Uh, God, do you see how roaring that river is right now? You see that stuff that's bloated down? We're going to stand still in that. Wow. You know, God always tells us to do the impossible. Jesus told a man that had a hand withered, stretch forth your hand. Really? He told a man that was lame, take up thy bed and walk. And there'll be, lot, there'll be times in our Christian walk that God says, I will want you to do that. And you'll say, impossible. That's completely 100% correct. That's why I want you to do it. I've had that happen to me many times. Get out there, open your mouth, preach the word. Lord God, there's no one here. Let's go home. I said open up that mouth. Do it. Mm. So I want you to go in that mighty great raving water and I want you to stand still in it. That's impossible. And Joshua said to the children of Israel, come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, hereby you shall know that the living God is among you. That he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hevites, the Pharisees, the Gergesites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. We're going to get victory. We've got this body of water, but we got victory. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. We're going in that river. Now therefore take ye twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every man a tribe. Now, you know, we tried this before with twelve men and we got in trouble. Ten out of the twelve ruined the, the people. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan. Now, you, you think that went well with the congregation? <laughs> and the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, up north. It flows from north to south. And they shall stand upon a heap. Now the Red Sea was a supernatural event. It parted the dry ground, they went upon it. The Jordan River is going to be a super, supernatural feat that the waters are going to gather into a heap. They're going to go up and up and up and up and up. They're just going to pile themselves on top of each other. The Red Sea and the Jordan River pictures death. Here is the baptism like the Red Sea. You're going through the waters. Now when you read Corinthians and Paul, it looks like the children of Israel, when they went to the Red Sea, it looks like that the Red Sea went over them. And there was waters to the left and waters to the right as they went through it. And it looks like through the Jordan River, it looks like you're going to have the waters go up and over the children of Israel. And all the children that died out were baptized through that water of the Red Sea. And here there are children who went to the Red Sea and children who have not gone to the Red Sea. And as they're going into the promised land, they're being baptized. 
And we'll see in chapter 4, we're going to see here is the place. Now this is important. Here's the place where John the Baptist was baptized in Israel. Here would be the place that John the Baptist baptized the 12 apostles, the disciples that will follow Jesus, that will go forth in the book of Acts, preaching the gospel. Right here where Joshua is right now, 1,400, 1,500 years later, John the Baptist is going to stand on this spot. He's going to stand where Joshua is going to stand. He is going to stand where the ark is standing, and he's going to baptize the nation of Israel as a man will come up and say, Hi, John. And John's going to say to him, hey, I, I don't need to baptize you. you got to baptize me. And Jesus goes under the water. Here we are. Jesus goes under the water. And God speaks from heaven. This is my beloved son. I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit comes down like not a dove, like as a dove coming down. Here it is right here. This is where we are in the Bible. We'll look at that in later chapters. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents, so they're in their tents, they're packing up their tents, to pass over Jordan. So look, they're willing to go. And the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, they're up ahead, and as they that bear the Ark were come into the Jordan, man, they're walking right into that water. And the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water. You ever come to a body of water and you put your feet in there, you put your toes, and you say, ooh, it's cold. <laughs> you, know, you see, is it cold? Is it warm? What kind of water it is? That, that's, that's where we are right now. The, the big toes, the toes are just touching the water, and they touch the brim of the water. For Jordan overflows all his banks all the time of harvest. Like I said, this is a time that Jordan is at its meanest, it is overflowing. That the waters which came down from above north stood and rose up upon a heap. You realize that's a violation of natural law of water. I don't care what you do without freezing water. You cannot make water stand up in the heat. That water is building itself up. It's building itself up. It's building this. That's a natural feat. It's an invisible dam. It's an invisible dam. And it says the water stood. You never can get water standing. And rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam. That's beside Zaratam. So here's a mountain of water. <laughs> impossible the Red Sea the flooding of Noah's time God can do wonders with water because God made the water come on oh, oh yeah, okay in the classroom see we can make water to wine like Jesus all right buddy let's go down the Mississippi River and let's see you make that thing rise up as a mountain the water come on let's see you do it Come on. Go over the Nile River. Go over to Jordan. Let's see you do Jordan. And those that came down toward the Sea of the Plain, even the Salt Sea, that's the Dead Sea. So see, it's called the Dead Sea, it's called the Salt Sea, and it's called the Sea of the Plain. It's got three names. Failed. And we're cut off. Here comes a guy. He, he's got his map. He's with a caravan. All right. Somewhere along here should be the Jordan River. Oh, maybe a little further. And they're walking miles, miles, and miles. And they passed the Jordan River. But there was no river. This mighty Jordan River that flows its banks... God said, I'll wait for the perfect time. I'll wait for that river to be his raging moment. 
And the people at the Dead Sea, they go down there and they float because they can't sink. They're sitting there, here comes a roar and sea and all And one moment, there it goes, where's the river? Why did the river stop? Oh, no, the river stopped. It says the, the waters failed. That's it. The Jordan River was shut up, building a mountain, 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 mountain. And we're cut off, and the people pass over right against Jericho. There's Jericho. So that moment where Jericho is, is it where, where Jesus was. Tells us where, the, where John the Baptist was. You imagine the people looking over the wall of Jericho? You imagine Rahab looking over? <coughs> wow, where did Jordan go? I bet you are people who relied on the Jordan River at this time when it overflowed for fish or whatever they do. I bet you they relied on it. And all of a sudden, one day they go out there, it's gone. I got a God can throw a river. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It's only going to get better in the next few chapters. Now watch this one. Stood firm on dry ground. That's exactly what happened to Red Sea. Can you imagine Joshua and Caleb sitting there scratching their head? He'd done it again. As it happened to Moses, it happened to Joshua. There was a mighty overflowing river, and now it is dry. Not, it's not muddy. It's not damp. It's dry. In the midst of Jordan. And all the Israel pass over on dry ground. You know how many people there are there? You ever seen pictures of like a, a, a sports arena or a marathon? You ever know how many people there are and you see these great big crowds? You ever been to a, a place where you got a, a parade going down Main Street and you see all the people lined up? You ever see all that? That's how many people here are crossing the Jordan River right now. There is, they're not going one by one, two by two, three by three. And don't forget, they got their animals, they got their children, they got the grandmothers, they got the mothers, they got the fathers. And there's a whole bunch of people and activity and animals crossing. And there are people going, ooh, ah, this is, and they're probably going, wow, this is cool, this is weird. They're probably checking it out. And they're probably going, oh my, God's going to, he's going to drown us. Let's hurry. People pushing, people looking, children, you know. Look, Mama Seashell, come on, Judas, go, let's go, hurry. Mom, look at a priest. No, come on, we gotta get across. Until all the people, all the people were passed clean over Jordan. So we got the Red Sea and we got the Jordan River crossing. And you realize what God just did? He did it again. You know what he did? He conquered the Canaanite god, Prince Yemen, the sea god, and Judge Nahas, the river god. Here are these Canaanites. Oh, holy God. Oh, holy water. Remember the Nile River was a god and God made it blood? They couldn't swim, they couldn't drink, they couldn't take a bath in it. Well, here's the Canaanites, they're coming to their God. They you know sunrise service, something like that. They're coming to their holy God, and where did my God go? Imagine those Canaanite nations, here they come to their, my God's gone. Someone stole my God. Oh, 911, my God, they stole my God. Yes. Because my God overpowers all gods. I'm praying to God that tomorrow morning there is no sunrise. It is pitch dark. It is raining. It is stormy. To show that my God is greater than a sunlight. And my God made that sun. And God said in the book of Ezekiel, you're not to have the sunrise, sir. It's, it's an abomination. Jeremiah tells you, you're not to have that Christmas tree. 
Hares are unclean animals. They got paws. When people are going to get it? So here we are in this mighty flowing river, Jordan. It has stopped. And it's not beavers building a dam. It's not men building a dam. It is God who didn't build a dam. He just... Uh, get that miracle. This outdid the Red Sea. The, somewhere up north, the Jordan River is making a mountain. And all Israel is passing again on dry land. So don't go over there and drain the river. Well, we got to find the footprints. You're not going to find footprints. It was dry ground. And we're going to see some of the next following chapters, and we'll, we will look into the Gospels. I've got a God who has all power. He says, I am the living water. I can make rivers flow. I can stop rivers. I can make a pathway through a sea. And yet when Jesus came on this planet, he stood at a, and sat at a well by a woman. He says, give me a drink of water. And he never got a drink, did he? He's, up, he's thirsting on the cross. He says, yeah, Father, forgive me when they know not what they do. And I am suffering and dying because of iniquity of people. I thirst. And they gave him vinegar. And God the Father says, I'll give you a way into the, into the promised land. I'll stop the river for you. And all these waters we're reading about in the Bible, all these lakes, all these oceans, all these seas, all these rivers, one day at the presence of God in Genesis chapter 9, they're going to flee away. And the only lake you're going to see after that is the lake of fire that burns forever. And the only sea you're going to see after that, for those that are saved, will be the crystal sea that's before the throne. Likened unto crystal, which means it's frozen. I hope heaven's not cold, but there's a crystal water in front of it. 